Hey everybody, James Yeager with Tactical Response. Got the hot crazy attorney back with me. Hello. <laughs> Let's see if we can viralize this one. Probably not. Okay, you had uh, you gave a lecture earlier to a group of young men. Yeah. Uh, I'll let you continue. Okay, so we're going to continue in our series of educational videos that we started five years ago. Uh, we'll probably put one out about every five, five years. years. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay, so uh, this one is dating for grown-ups. Okay, this is not directed at 20, 25-year-olds. You know, young people do it that way. Um, do it however way you're, do you're going to do it. But if you've done this before, if you've gotten married, did the kids, did all that stuff, and you're back out there to date again, uh, I want to give you some guidance on that. Now, my my CV, if you will, uh, I've been married 27 years, and I've been a divorce lawyer for 26 years. So this is the accumulated knowledge that I have for you about how to date as a grown-up. People ask me what I do sometimes, and I say I set MILFs free. <laughs> so when I set them free, here's what I tell them. Okay, first of all, you should only take a first date with someone that you want to have sex with, someone for whom you have an intense sexual desire and you don't have to tell dudes this because dudes first of all don't have to be told this and second of all dudes criteria threshold for who they would have sex with is much lower than women <laughs> <laughs> women are much more selective but you do have to tell women this because women like think oh well well he's really sweet or he's you know super nice to his dog or they have a million reasons that they think that later they'll develop some lust for this dude don't do that. It won't happen. You'll just regret it. So you only take a first date with someone for whom you have an intense sexual desire. The first date goes like this. It's short and it's sober. You arrive separately and the only point of the first date is to confirm or reject the theory that you want to have sex with this person. So you meet them in person and if you, if 15 minutes later you still want to have sex with them or more, then you check out, you leave and you inquire as to whether there is to be a second date. If you both want to go on a second date, then you should propose this uh, arrangement. You both bring 10 questions. And here are the rules. You both bring 10 questions. You can ask anything. Yes, that too. You can ask anything, anything at all that you want. When asked a question, you have three choices. Leave, pass, answer. If you answer, your answer must be the raw truth, whole, unvarnished, ugly truth. So you would ask a question of her. Now, you, this date, you go somewhere that's cozy with booze that you can hang out and, and talk softly, like talk mm -hmm. intimately, right? So you would ask her a question, and she can leave, pass, or answer. Now, if you've asked her a question that causes her to leave on the first question, maybe check your questions, but, but you know, cool. You haven't wasted a lot of time. But 10 questions, you ask her one, she gives you an answer, whatever it may be. Leave, pass, answer. And then she asks you one. Now, if you're doing this right, of course, there'll be flirting and booze and conversation that kind of meanders around, but you ultimately get back to the 10 questions, right? Now, you got to think about the 10 questions you would ask. These are what these are what I would say, get the deal breakers out. Get the deal breakers out there. Whatever they are for you. I don't care what they give, are for you. Give them an example, if you don't mind. Like... Have you ever been involuntarily compelled to go to a courthouse? If so, why? Okay, you know, like, <laughs> that might matter, you know. It, it's funny because I run this past women and they go, I don't know, that doesn't sound very romantic. And I'm like, it's not romantic. Right. It's microwaved uh, It's microwaved intimacy to see if you can get somewhere with this relationship. Because you're 40 or you're 50 and you don't have six months or a year to waste to see if these things organically, these questions and deal breakers organically emerge, you're just going to blaze right through them, right? So, um, you know, that might be a deal breaker for a woman. Oh, yeah, I have three domestic violence arrests. Good to know. Might not have asked that unless we were doing it this way, right? So um, you get 10 questions back and forth. If you're both sitting there satisfied with the 10 answers you got, go home and have sex. Because you started out intensely sexually attracted to this person. You've now gone through the process of weeding out 10 potential deal breakers both ways. And if you're smart, you'll listen to the questions that are asked of mm -hmm. you as well. Because those are instructive. Those are telling you what she's 
making important, right? If you're both happy with the 10 answers, go home and have sex. And if that works out, y'all've got a shot. Like that might work. A chance. You got a chance. You've got a chance, you know? And because I think, and it doesn't sound romantic, it's not romantic. Right. It's efficient and effective and it compels people to check, first of all, what's important. What are you really looking for? Like you can't show up with 10 meaningful questions without really kind of doing an inventory on yourself. What am I really after here? What are the criteria that I'm looking for? Hell, I might, you know, if it was me, and if my wife sees this, no, I'm not planning anything, but if it was me, you know, I might say, tell me about the last book you read. And if she went, ah, I don't really read books. Okay. You know, right. that's an answer. Not one I thrill to, but okay, fine. Your wife doesn't read a lot? Uh, well, she she reads. <laughs> she listens to books. She likes that's to listen good to enough. books. That's yeah, good she enough. likes to listen to books. She spends a lot of time working by herself, so she listens to books. <laughs> but I'm joking. <laughs> so whatever it is you like, you know, fit, you have to go through the process of figuring it out. And it'll spare you like six months down the road from having this awkward moment where you're like, oh, my God, you voted for Hillary? I got to go. Yeah. You know, or you've gotten to know their dog. You've met their children. You know, I, and now you got shit at her house. And now it's awkward. Like, blaze through that. Yeah. And then pause and be like, okay, you know, like. And, and it's like it's like an artificial moment where you can set aside the bullshit because I imagine that a lot of the a lot of this dating dance is presenting a false persona, presenting mm -hmm. like your best behavior or the version of you you wish people would believe. Right. But it's not. Well, and guys do that in the hopes that by the time you figure it out, you got laid. You're well, you're stuck. Yeah, you know? yeah, you got them right. Like, oh, they figured it out, but not before. <laughs> right. So, like, like. Yeah, so like I think this is a way, and again, this is not for the young people who are going to fall in love for the first time and all that. This is for people who've like, it didn't work, something something burned up the, the last relationship, your fault or theirs, doesn't matter. And you don't want to get invested in someone that's ultimately incompatible. And if you're, you know, there's a, there's a kid in the class today, he's 19. Like, I, I'm, I just told him, I'm like, you don't even know what questions to ask, never right. mind what answers you want. Like, you just don't. You haven't... You haven't been around the sun enough, enough times. So, but when you're grown up, like, you know, you know, you probably, you might not pick the same person that you would have when you were 19. Right. Might be a different kind of person is appealing to you. So you have the chance to like really, really get to know someone quickly, expose all the, mm -hmm. hey, it, I think it would be easy. Like if I had some deep, dark secret, you know, that I was like ashamed of and I threw it out there on the second date because she asked. And she didn't get up and leave. Whew. Like, oh man, that's a that's a relief. That's like, like I killed a man in Reno one right, time. Right, right, yeah, you know. <laughs> right, so that's and, and, and something subtle, and it's 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 a tactic. It's it, it was kind of subtle. He didn't say, "Have you ever been arrested for domestic violence?" No, he said he zoomed out. Have you ever been to the courthouse unwillingly? Yeah, involuntarily. Uh, and so that opens it up to so many other possibilities. So don't be narrow with your question. Be right. broad with your question. Yeah, like, but it forces you to think about what you're really trying. Like, if you don't care how much money someone makes or has, or if they're even bad at money, okay. But if that's really something that, like, if you know that in your last two relationships, it was the money that blew things up because you're like, balancing the checkbook every 10 minutes and she's off just like at Target getting shit and that drives you insane, then you need to know that about yourself. If you, can't, then, if you can't afford Target, you need I'm it. just saying. It, it's not so much the affording. It's the it's the, it's the the bookkeeping. Some people are really fastidious <laughs> about the bookkeeping, right? So if it drives you crazy that your girl won't bring a receipt to you, then, you know, you need to, like, be self-aware enough right. to know that maybe you want to ask her you know, how organized are right. you with finances? And so, stuff? so you divorce A's. What he's giving you is an option between a blind date and online dating. Right. He's giving you something in person. It's kind of like the best of both worlds. It's in person, but it is such a thorough and fast right. selection process uh, that uh, it, it offers you a, a more personal thing. And, and even on the online dating, you're not going to say, you've been arrested for pedophilia. No, like, you, you, I mean... This is only something you can do with, like, a person that you have personal access to, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of times I'll explain this to women, and they kind of go, I don't know. that. I don't know about that. But then they sit and they go, you mean I can ask him if he's ever been arrested? Yes. The rules are you can ask anything. 
You mean I can ask him how much money he made? If that's important to you, yes. And then if you ask him that, he can then sit there and go, if that matters to you enough to make it your third question, You're that may be a problem. Yeah. You know, that may not be, you know. So, like, leave pass answer, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, and, and imagine the question number three comes and it's just – the, the fact that someone would ask, not that they would ask today, that they would ask ever is you're out. You just say, you know what? I, I'm sure you're a lovely person. I don't think we have a future. I got the tab. Peace out. No hard feelings. You don't have to go get your shit. You don't miss her dog. Just. <laughs> <laughs> you don't miss her dog. Man, I would think if I, you know, like, that would be hard for me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. get all attached to somebody's dog and then they don't like me anymore and I can't see the dog. <laughs> Like, fuck. Okay. Do you get visitation rights on the dog? Or? I don't think so. I've never had that. I've never been able to do that. So, all right. Anything else, man? Just you know, like, try to be honest. And people are like, what if they lie to you? I'm like, I hope you have some kind of like bullshit detector that halfway works. Like that's part of the process. Like if they show up and keep throwing up that whole glamorous bullshit. Like if you ask someone a question for which no one can possibly have a perfect glamorous answer and they give you one now you know you're dealing with someone who didn't who you explain the rules and they decide to lie to you anyway about something that was on the one hand important but on the other hand like you're not invested in this thing they're already willing to lie to you to get you further in mm-hmm. wow they better be hot <laughs> yeah wait yeah. <laughs> then see <C> matrix <laughs> to decide how long you want to stay there all right all right so good. dating for grown-ups all right dating for grown-ups D- dana um you want to talk? Tell them how to hire you. <laughs> uh, just Google me and call me and get your uh, get you, your have your mastercard. If you make ready. the wrong answer, right, and you want to give somebody half your shit, right. If you if you listen to my advice and wind up doing dumb shit anyway, I'm going to charge you twice as much. <laughs> James so. Jager and Dana for tap the response, reminding you that your responsibility to be ready for the fight, fight for your life, never ends. <laughs>